So this is one of the axles here, folks, that uh, I am yet to do any kind of prep work on or anything. I'll give you a bit of a look at it. So the one thing that is really notable, other than just the really poor state of the paintwork and everything on it, that it's just got lots of, you know, rust with overspray over it and all that sort of stuff, is uh, the state of the, the rubbers. You can see how cracked up and, you know, just really dirty and real horrible looking they sort of are and you know the whole kind of kind of business of them they just look absolutely terrible well let me show you one that i've already worked on a little bit of a difference there folks i've spent probably a couple of hours on this one but uh, the biggest thing that I think I need to show you guys about it is the way that the rubbers have come up with a bit of work. Um, you know, cleaning up all the metal parts and everything, that's just using a wire wheel and, you know, stripping them all off and all that sort of thing, involving a few different sort of size and shape wire wheels to get into all the crevices and everything. But uh, I'll give you a look at the rubbers. Yeah. Oh, quite heavy folks if you have a look none of that cracking and uh, just general horror stuff is, is there anymore and the rubber is actually quite soft and supple again and uh, how I've achieved that folks is just by sanding the rubber yes sanding the rubber So what actually looks like the rubber on this, folks, most of it is contaminants that's sitting on top of the rubber. Some of it is in the very, very first uh, sort of layer of the rubber, but most of it can actually just be removed, and you can bring the, uh, the CV boots back to a pretty reasonable condition. They're actually a lot softer and supple now that that stuff's removed, because this actually kind of makes the whole thing feel really brittle. And what all these surface contaminants can do is actually start cracks and cause the cv boots to actually rip so what we've got to do is we've got to actually get rid of all this off there so what i do folks i, I use a a little bit of a mixture of, of different sandpapers i kind of go at it with say 80 grit sandpaper and get the most of it off and then go down to say you know maybe 120 or 180 or something get it kind of smooth and the final thing that I do, folks, is I hit it with acetone. Now, the acetone actually starts to eat into the rubber, but uh, that's a good thing in this situation because what it does is it penetrates the initial outside layer and helps remove it. So you can actually work on the rubber with acetone after you've removed all the really hard stuff. And it's quite obvious when you start rubbing it, when you've actually rubbed off any remaining sort of hard, dried-out brittle stuff and you're back down to sort of fresh rubber like we've got here. Um, it's a good process. It, it certainly uh, helps to extend the life of any sort of worn CV boots and everything. And uh, the reason I'm doing this on these is there's mechanically nothing wrong with these. The axles are quite good. The, the CV joints are still quite tight, uh, other than the fact that, you know, the paintwork, like everything else that's under the back of this car, uh, it's all just at some point been oversprayed in black paint. I, I think this car would have possibly been in a car yard at some point where they tend to you know, just get under everything with a spray gun and GMH black and they just tend to spray over everything with black paint to hide, you know, all the sins that they can. So if someone pokes their head under the back of the car or any or under the car in general, it looks kind of fresh and the black just hides everything. But it gets all over everything. You can see it's it's on all the straps that hold the C V boots on. It's just over everything and it's been over every single component in the car in the rear axle assembly that i've gotten out and cleaned up and sort of repainted and everything like it's just over everything all the nuts and bolts brake lines you know the diff housing the diff just everything had over spray of black paint on it which is just horrendous stuff to try and deal with so anyway folks i'm about to start on this one this one's done it's ready for paint and i will be painting these with some uh, some pour 15 just on all the exposed metal areas so when they're painted these axles will look brand new again so uh I might have a bit of a go at this one, folks. I'll, uh, I'll do a bit of filming and um, I'll just speed it up so that you don't have to sort of watch me 
go through it all but i'm sure you'll see this axle slowly start to look like this one so um i might get into it eh So you can see how beneficial all the wire wheel work is on the axle there folks. All these really daggy ends, you know, like all the splines that cleaned up, you know, all the sort of rusty, greasy crap that was on there, all the threads are nice and clean. The seal surfaces are all really nice and clean now. All this is kind of ready to paint. The axle itself is nice and clean. The dry flange end is also all nice and clean and rust free and ready to paint. Now what we've got to work on, folks, is all this all this area on the rubbers now, which, as you just saw, is pretty friggin' crusty looking. So, uh, that's what I'm about to do. I've got a roll of 80 grit, I've got a roll of 180 grit here. So I'll start with the 80, and I'll just start sanding off all that crap that's on the outside of these rubbers and I'll give you a look as we progress. Right folks, that's just the very first go over with the 80 grit paper. You can already see the difference 
in the rubber and when you're working on it with the sandpaper you can feel it you know there's a big difference in the feel of the paper when you actually rub through that hard crusty layer and actually hit the nice soft rubber you know it becomes very grippy and sort of you know has a completely different feel to it so uh, you can see that it no longer has that hard crusty layer and the rubber is actually staying to flex a lot easier um, yeah so I'll uh, I'll probably do the other end like this and then I'll have a bit of a look at it and I might change paper down to something a little bit less aggressive now I've tried quite a few different mechanical methods to do this folks and uh, nothing seems to work it either ends up being too aggressive on the rubber or just doesn't remove it in the way I'd like to so unfortunately uh, the way I do these it's just a lot of hard work it's like uh, restoring a piece of old furniture folks and just rubbing all the timber work back by hand it takes a while but it's worth it in the end as you can see folks it's already starting to come good now get this real nice and clean and throw a bit of rubber conditioner and stuff on them which is what I've done with the others and, and mate they look brand new again anyway <coughs> I'll get this one and there you go just a quick comparison between the two from what we've just done so I won't show you this one folks I'll just do that up off camera and then uh, I'll go on to the uh, finer grade paper and I'll give you a look at it once all the sanding's done before I hit it with any rubber conditioner right folks I've just finished with the 180 paper um, I'm now past the abrasive stage. I'm about to start with the chemical stage. So here you go. That's uh, that's the 120 paper finish. You could obviously keep going finer and finer with your papers, folks, and start to really get a sort of a glossy polish on the rubber. But as you'll see, when we go at it with the acetone, it really kind of removes what's left there. The the beauty of the acetone is it attacks the crusty layer more than it attacks the rubber it will sort of start eating into the rubber but only very slightly but it will really attack any of this hard crap that's left on there and uh, it evaporates really fast folks and doesn't leave any residue behind so it won't continually uh, affect the rubber we're really just using it as a chemical cleaner at this stage so i'll just throw on some um, nitrile gloves folks the acetone still attacks these, unfortunately, but uh, it's better than nothing. I could put some chemical gloves on, folks, but I just don't have the dexterity that I need to do this when I have chemical gloves on. So, unfortunately, well, that's a bit of a dud. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to have to put up with the nitrile. It will, it will eat through it eventually and soften it to a point where I start rubbing the fingers out of the glove, but I'll just swap and uh, go to a new glove, you know. I'm almost out of acetone, folks. I hope I've got enough to finish this. So you can see straight away, folks, the acetone's starting to remove residue off the rubber some of it is the rubber itself but most of it is uh, remnants of our crusty layer obviously you could skip this layer because it is pretty good already but this just really helps even it up and uh, get rid of any of this really horrid stuff that's left on there you can actually see it as you sort of start wiping it. You can, it's like all of it, folks. It sort of works as a guide coat while you're sanding it. You can see where you've removed the layer and where it still is because it'll be like a sort of a brownie color until you sand it off and the rubber's nice and black underneath. So you don't really need to be able to gauge um, when it's gone and when it's still there because it'll be quite obvious in the fact that you can actually physically see the difference between the rubber and the crusty layer and it's not weakening the rubber in any way folks because what you're removing actually adds no strength to the cv boot it's just crust, crusty crap sitting on top of it that stops the boot flexing and uh, creates cracks there you go look you can see gloves starting to turn to poo 
Some. I think we might call that one done. That's pretty clean now, folks. I'll throw a new glove on and uh, I'll hit this end. I find other chemicals like wax and grease remover doesn't do the same job. It just doesn't um, remove this residue like uh, acetone does. And uh, thinners doesn't either, and thinners is a lot worse on the gloves and on your hands while you're using it. So uh, acetone is my go-to. I actually use acetone for a lot of things on vehicle restoration, folks. It's, um, it's actually really good for removing overspray off parts like I've had so much of with this vehicle, everything just about under the car has been covered in overspray. Uh, you're able to use acetone to uh, remove the overspray without really damaging sort of anything else. It, uh, and it actually seems to be better than thinners at doing it under most circumstances. For this sort of stuff too, it, I guess it probably depends on what's under there, what you're trying to remove, but just generally, I uh, get the best results with acetone, but it is something you always want to have gloves on for. Uh, yeah, just like thinners, really. All right, that's looking pretty clean now, folks. Really happy with that. Now, where to from here? Alright, so there's what we have now after using the acetone on it. Uh, you can still sort of see light sanding marks in it, but it is very, very clean, folks. And there's no more of that cracky, crusty stuff. And our rubber is now quite soft and supple because it just doesn't have that stuff on the surface stopping it from moving. Alright, so... Uh, So what I have here, folks, this is something that I use a lot to try and restore uh, plastics, old plastics and rubbers and stuff. I have no affiliation with the chemical guys. It's just a product of theirs that I've used over the years and found to be really good. For me personally, for trying to restore old rubber and things, I get the best results out of this product compared to anything else that I've tried. And I've tried quite a lot of products, particularly a lot of the mainstream brand products. And uh, this always gives me better results. It's a gel. And what I'll do with this, folks, is I'll lather this onto the CV joint boots. And then I'll let it sit overnight. Then in the morning, I'll just come and wipe it all off. And uh, basically what I'll be left with is a really soft, shiny uh, rubber, which looks almost brand new. It is kind of sticky, horrible stuff, folks, that really kind of gets into your skin too. So I always tend to use a glove with it. You can put it on with an applicator, and I do, depending on what I'm doing, if I'm doing tires and, you know, various sort of small bits of trim and stuff, I use an applicator. But in a situation like this, I'm just going to squeeze some on and, and in my gloves and stuff, and I'm just going to kind of work it in with my fingers.
riding around in your old black robe. And that's pretty much that, folks. So, other than like I say, we'll let that sit overnight now. And uh, we'll uh, clean it all off tomorrow. And then we'll get them ready for paint. But as you can see, folks, what a transformation from brittle looking, crusty, hard things that were really hard to move. That basically, if you would have pushed it too hard, it probably would have split just because of the surface tension from the crud on the outside. But now they're just nice and soft, clean. You can put stuff like this on them and it'll actually stay on the surface now. Whereas if you tried to put anything like this on the, the rubber without sanding all the crap off, you basically would have just been put putting stuff, you know, into the crap and it doesn't actually get into the rubber and do anything. So, uh, yeah. As I say, folks, we'll let all that dry overnight and then we'll, uh, we'll clean it off and have another look at it. And then both axles will be ready for paint. And there we go, folks. All finished and painted, ready to be wrapped up and stored for their turn to go back onto the Fair Lady. So you can see folks, they, they, they just look like new axles now, all painted up nice and, you know, the rubbers look good, nice and rubbery. It, uh, it, you know, it all worked out really well. So that's how you do it folks, cosmetic restoration of your axles. And as I mentioned earlier, the CV joints seemed fine on them, which was the reason why there was no need to sort of cut the boots off and, and do anything with the CV joints. If there was any damage to the boots and the CV joints had lost any grease or anything like that, then that would have been a different story. It would have been new boots, rebuild the CVs, or get new CVs, new axles, or whatever. But for a lot of the time, you can get away with just doing this because realistically, there's nothing wrong with these units other than they looked extremely sad paintwork was terrible the boots looked like they were about to fall to pieces but as you can see that's not the case bit of a clean up coat of paint and get that really heavy crusty layer off the rubber on the cv boots and they'll certainly last a hell of a lot longer in service so i hope you like that video folks at least it sort of highlights an alternative to when you have a situation like this when you have a mechanical component that there's nothing wrong with other than cosmetically, it just it looks absolutely terrible, you know, and you wouldn't put it back on the car in the state that it's in. And it makes it really hard to sort of know how far you need to go. And, and of course, the amount of money that you have to spend, it's not cheap rebuilding these axles. It's, uh, it's rather pricey. So as always, folks, thanks for stopping by the Aussie Shed. Bloody pleasure to have you here. If you like the video, remember, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. And I'll bloody well see you on the next one. Cheers.